despite the, the dramatic and I would even say tragic events we are just going to discuss uh, in a minute. The first time we see each other after the, after the Christmas break and therefore I really would like to wish uh, all of you, all the citizens you represent and all the European Union, all the best uh, in uh, the new year and the happiest uh, 2020. We know that it will be a very challenging year and therefore I very much appreciate uh, that you put already as a first item on the plenary uh, agenda this urgent debate on the devastating bushfires in Australia. As you know, my colleagues uh, commissioners are now coming to Strasbourg from Luxembourg where they've been pledging the uh, oath uh, to the office at the European Court of Justice and therefore it would be my pleasure and my honour to represent the European Commission in the afternoon uh, plenary debates with you. As you very well know, and as Australia has uh, confirmed, these fires which are going to debate are unprecedented. They devastated local communities. They led to the tragic losses of homes. And they've taken lives of people and possible over a billion of animals, many of which completely unique in the world. Beyond the immediate destruction of forests, land, lives, animals uh, and ecosystems, this wildfire jeopardized the health and livelihoods uh, in other places as well. Canberra experienced peak air pollution levels that were 20 times above the hazardous thresholds to give just one example. First and foremost, we send our support and uh, solidarity to Australia. The European Union stands ready to help uh, uh, Australian people. On Sunday, yesterday, my colleague Commissioner Lenarcic uh, reached out and spoke to the Australian Minister Little Proud and he reiterated the Union's readiness to assist Australia in this moment of crisis. He also informed uh, the Minister of the possibility for, in particular, firefighters to be deployed at short notice under the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. The Minister appreciated the support and readiness of the Union to help, but he reiterated uh, that at this stage they don't require additional assistance. Honourable Members, the science is loud and clear. Climate change will increase the frequency of extreme weather events and these events will continue to affect us and with more and more consequences and with higher and higher intensity. Do we need more proof that prevention of climate change and environmental destruction, adaptation and disaster risk prevention are absolutely necessary? That we need to mitigate the effects of climate change together in Europe, in Australia and in the rest of the world? We have discussed many times in recent months the importance of EU leadership on global climate action. The effective implementation of the Paris Agreement and increasing global ambition is a key priority under the European Green Deal. The European Union will use all the tools at our disposal to tackle the global climate challenge. Our bilateral engagement with partner countries is crucial, in particular with G20 economies that are responsible for three quarters of global emissions. We value our long-standing partnership with Australia and are working to strengthen it through the establishment of the dialogue on climate action under the framework agreement. The Commission thanks the Parliament for tabling this urgent debate and for seeing the climate urgency also in these tragic events and uh, especially uh, in these circumstances where we need to highlight uh, the need to take global action. This is yet another proof of Europe's ambition to take leadership against climate change uh, and on this the Commission will always remain on your side. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner.